For as long as I can remember, people have been asking me for parts lists for their own builds. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what modifications you need to reach certain horsepower levels. And this is going to be for STIs only. If you guys want, I can do one on an FA20 WRX or older EJ style WRXs. Some of the stuff we're gonna be talking about is going to apply over to EJ based WRXs for the most part with the exception of your short blocks. So keep that in mind as we're going through this. There's a couple disclaimers. Um, yes, even though I'm giving you straight up parts lists, every tuner is going to tune a car differently. So all of these parts lists should get you in the range of the horsepower that you're targeting. We're gonna be going from 300, 350, 400, 450, and 500. Some of these things are going to transfer from one list over to the other, so keep that in mind. I will annotate those as I'm going through this. Also keep in mind, there's many different ways to make horsepower. There's many different parts you can use. This is just the list that I am giving you guys. It's a pretty robust list. It's a pretty solid list, all quality parts, nothing cheap. So if you are following these lists, they may be a little bit expensive. Also for any 04 to 06 STI owners out there, this is going to require you to convert from side feed to top feed for injectors. Nobody really uses side feed injectors anymore. Um, it's 2021, just get top feed. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. We're gonna start out in the first category of 300 wheel horsepower, if that is your target. Now it's not too hard to make 300 wheel horsepower in an STI. Any tuning platform, you are gonna be looking at getting an access port. An access port is going to be pretty much required to any tuner that you go to. Most pro tuners use a program called Access Tuner. Access Tuner is what is programmed into the access port, weirdly enough. So if you don't have an access port, that's gonna be the one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to buy. Secondly, you're gonna want an intake for the car, the Cobb SF intake take is going to be my recommendation. Yes, you can get the red line if you want to, but it's not really worth the money in my opinion. You're, you're looking at almost two and a half times the cost for an intake on that. So SF intake with the box to be specific on that one. You're also gonna be looking at a downpipe. My suggestion to you guys is just get the Cobb catted downpipe. There's a lot of really good downpipe options out there on the market, but Cobb has always been my go-to. They're an open bell mouth design versus a divorced. In the future, if you are planning to make more power, you're gonna want something that's a little more open bell mouth than divorced if you are going to be going external wastegate. If you're gonna be staying internal wastegate, get the Grim Speed one. You're also going to need a boost controller. Uh, my Cobb, Grim Speed, they're all the same with just different branding on them. Get whatever one you prefer. My preference is Cobb. They're all pretty much the same price as well. So you do you on that one. And then you're also going to want a cat back. You don't have to get a cat back. Get whatever cat back you want. Uh, there's millions of options out there. I'm not going to tell you which cat back to get. Get whatever one you're feeling. Whatever one meets your budget. Whatever one you like. Then as a bonus on this one, I would suggest an IAG air oil separator, whether it be street series or competition series. That is entirely up to you. I would do the research into those a little bit more personally. I prefer the competition series over the street series. Um, but depending on what state you live in, uh, what you can and cannot get, you might want one that is carb compliant. I believe Cobb is working on getting a carb compliancy with their AOS, which is just a rebranded IAG V2 AOS from the last time I looked at it. Uh, there's one annotation on this first mod list to get to 300 wheel horsepower is injectors. If you are on a 2015 plus STI, you are going to want injectors at minimum. I would also suggest doing a fuel pump at this point if you are in that year range of 2015 plus STI. Your stock injector duty cycle is going to be through the roof and you don't want to be running your injector duty cycle all the way up if you can avoid it. Yes, you can do it on stock injectors. Would I, re would I recommend it? No, not at all. So 2015 plus STIs, I would recommend like an AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump and a set of ID 1050s. Now I will also link all of these parts lists down below. So that way, if you guys miss anything, you can go down below in the description, review these parts lists and kind of find out what you want. But for the most part, that should get you to about 300 wheel horsepower. Like I said, every tuner is going to tune differently. So it's going to be in that ballpark range of 300. Next up, we're going to jump up to 350 wheel horsepower. So some of the things that we just talked about are going to transfer over to this 350 wheel horsepower range. It's going to be the access port, the Cobb SF intake with the box, the Cobb three port boost controller, the Cobb catted down pipe, and whatever cat back you prefer, and the IAG AOS for that bonus. Next up, like we just talked about, at this point you are going to want ID 1050s at minimum with an AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump. 
you're going to be pushing it a little hard. Your stock injectors are not that big. I want to say they're around 650 cc from the factory. So jumping up to a set of 1050s is really going to open you up a little bit more for some power and it's going to give you some good headroom for injector duty cycle as well. If you don't know what injector duty cycle is, it's essentially how hard your injectors are working. You can pull up injector duty cycle on your access port to see what the percentage is of your injector duty cycle when you're doing pull. So after that basic fuel stuff of injectors and fuel pump. You can keep your stock fuel rails for the time being, but I would highly suggest getting the Cobb Fuel Stumble Fix Kit. It's essentially a GD chassis fuel pressure regulator. It just has a lot less dampers built into it and it helps with the fuel stumble a little bit as well. Your tuner will appreciate it, you will appreciate it, and it's not that expensive. I think they're like 200 bucks. Let's talk turbos at this point because we like turbos. Your stock STI VF39 is probably going to cap out around 330-ish wheel horsepower. At this point, you're going to want to start looking into an aftermarket turbo. The one that I would suggest for about the 350 wheel horsepower range is going to be the Cobb 20G Turbo. I believe that one is already carb compliant for those of you who are in California. Unfortunately, some of these modifications are not going to be open to you guys. Uh, but at this point, you are going to want to swap out the VF39. Cobb 20G is probably your best bet on that one. While you're swapping out that turbo, I would also recommend swapping out the stock up pipe. Now, if you plan on going external wastegate in the future, you plan on making more power in the future, I would highly suggest getting a PLM up pipe with a 38 millimeter port on it. Block off the 38 millimeter port, run it as internal wastegate, but that will set you up for the future. If you're only planning on staying internal wastegate, get like a grim speed ceramic coated up pipe. They're a little bit better than factory. Uh, the flex joints in them tend to seem okay over time. I haven't seen too many of them fail unless they're like super, super, super old. Um, but I would swap that out while you're doing the turbo as well. Next up, you're going to want to swap out that turbo inlet. This can be a little bit of a pain to install, but the Perrin 2.4 inch turbo inlet is probably the best go-to for the price for turbo inlets on the market for fitment, uh, for price, and for functionality. It's not a bad turbo inlet. At this point, you are probably going to want to swap out your spark plugs with a one-step colder plug. It's just a different heat range of spark plugs. I always suggest people go with the NGK 2309 plug. That's what I use in my six cylinder STI. That's what Matt uses in his EJ. It's what I've used in all of my EJs in the past. It's a very good spark plug. Um, just make sure you're getting OEM authentic ones. There are some like third party knockoff spark plugs. For some reason, people are making those, but they are making them. And then the other bonus part that I have for you on this one is going to be a Koyo radiator. No, it's not 100% needed, uh, but I do suggest doing it at this point. Next up, 400 wheel horsepower. Let's just get into it. So a uh, couple advisory notices before we go into the 400 wheel horsepower range. If you do not have a type RA short block, that's going to be 2019 and plus STIs and the type RA STI, this is where I would advise you to stop. I wouldn't push your factory EJ past 400 wheel horsepower if you are looking for reliability out of it. Second, this is also where your stock clutch may start to give out on you. So we may jump into the clutch realm in this category as well. So some of the parts that are going to be transferring over from that 350 wheel horsepower range are going to be the access port, the Cobb SF intake with the box, the three port boost controller, whatever brand it be that you decide to get, the Cobb catted downpipe, the AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump, the Grim Speed up pipe or whatever one you decide to go with, the Perrin 2.4 inch turbo inlet, the NGK 2309 spark plugs, and the ID 1050s. Now the ID 1050s, I have a caveat on that. If you are only staying on pump gas at 400 wheel horsepower, stick with ID 1050s. If you plan on going with flex fuel, I would advise you get ID 1300s. Now the only reason I advise you get ID 1300s over 1050s at this 400 wheel horsepower mark is your injector duty cycle on E85 tends to be a lot higher because you're trying to push a lot more fuel through the injector than you would with pump gas. So to bring your injector duty cycle back down a little bit more, you're going to want to jump up to an ID 1300. Now, if you are going with that flex fuel, like we did talk about, you are going to need a Cobb flex fuel sensor at this point. Aside from that, moving forward, you're going to want some IAG TGV deletes or pencil holders, whatever you decide to call them. Uh, you're going to want some fuel rails at this point. You can go with whatever brand fuel rail you want out there, whether it be Cobb, Radium, IAG, the preference is all yours. They're pretty much all the exact same fuel rail. Uh, pick whatever one you're feeling. I would also advise you do some Dash 6 fuel line at this point because you are doing fuel rails. So you're gonna have to do fuel line as well. There are some kits out on the market. I don't like any of them um, personally, but if you are looking for one, IAGs is all right. Um, 
I, per, I normally I go with Vibrant Dash 6 AN line that is rated for E85, uh, and I just make all my own fuel lines. It gives you a little bit more control over where you want to put your fuel pressure regulator um, and how you want to route your fuel lines. There's also the question of parallel versus series fuel lines. Um, I always run mine in parallel versus series. I don't like running fuel in series through the, the fuel system. Series is essentially when the fuel comes out of the feed, um, it goes through one fuel rail, comes out one fuel rail, goes to feed the other rail, and then goes back to the fuel pressure regulator. Parallel is when it Y's off and then it Y's off to each fuel rail, and then those Y back to the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, for fuel pressure regulators, my go-to has always been the Aeromotive A1000. It's a really good fuel pressure regulator. It's affordable, it's compact, so you can fit it in some nice tight areas if you want to. Uh, it's a pretty good fuel pressure regulator. Going back into the realm of turbos, at this point, you're going to want to scrap that that Cobb 20G and go with an FP Blue. Yes, the Cobb 20G is rated for 400 wheel horsepower, but that's really the cap of it. Yes, you can push it past it if you want to, but I would advise that if you're shooting for 400 wheel horsepower and you haven't already bought a different turbo, go with the FP Blue. It's a very good turbo for that power range. I ran it on this STI when it did have an EJ in it for a while. Uh, very responsive, very good turbo, made power relatively nicely. Uh, as well as that, you're going to want to ditch the stock top mount intercooler at this point you're going to want to go something a little more beefy i'm not going to advise any top mount intercoolers to you guys you guys know how i feel about them i don't like them i've never been a fan of them at this point i would suggest getting an ets three inch front mount intercooler um, with just a stock flange on it because you're still going to be using the stock bypass valve at this point for exhaust manifolds you're going to want to swap to something aside from the stock exhaust manifold my recommendations are if you want to stick with unequal length um, that's totally up to you. Tomei is a decent one that a lot of people go with. I personally don't like Tomei headers. I think the three bolt design on them is atrocious to work on. Uh, my recommendation for you guys is always going to be Killer B or ETS. Both of those are the go-to header that I've always had good success with. Uh, if applicable to you, a secondary air pump delete, I would advise doing that if your state isn't too strict on emissions. Uh, it just helps clean up the engine bay a little bit and while you have the turbo out, it just makes life a little bit easier to get back there to get those ports off of the back of the heads to get those out of there. Uh, I wire speed density and MAF conversion at this point. So it's essentially adding an IAT sensor, which is an intake air temperature sensor to your charge piping for your intercooler. That's going to be based off of air temperature and the MAF. So it's going to be working in conjunction with one another to help the car run a little bit smoother. And then like I mentioned earlier, your stock clutch will probably give out at this point or it will start to slip. If you can afford it, I would highly suggest getting an ACT HDSS clutch. It's rated to about, uh, what was it? I want to say it's like 515 foot pounds of torque so that should keep you just fine for quite a while uh, and then the other bonus part for this one it's not a power part but the iag or the killer b oil pan pickup and uh oil pan set 100 recommend it now let's jump up into the 450 wheel horsepower range if you are looking for more power so once again non-type ra engines consider a built short block if you are going into this 450 wheel horsepower range some of the parts that are going to transfer over from the last list are the cob access port the cob sf intake with box a three port boost controller the cob catted down pipe whatever cat back you're feeling the aem 340 liter per hour fuel pump para 2.4 inch turbo inlet the ngk 2309 spark plugs the cob flex fuel sensor if you are going flex fuel the iag tg delete's the iag fuel rails the diy dash 6 fuel line that you made the aeromotive a1000 fuel pressure regulator killer b holy header or ets1 whatever you decide to get i wires math speed density conversion the act hdss clutch uh, and then if applicable a secondary air pump delete now the differences here are you're going to want to different turbo selection. My recommendation on the 450 wheel horsepower range is going to be the FP Green. Blausch does make some really good turbos as well, like the 2.5 XTR is another turbo that I'd recommend to people, or the 2.0. Uh, the PLM up pipe, we mentioned this one earlier. So if you're looking at 450 wheel horsepower, I would advise you go external wastegate at this point. Uh, it just helps with better boost control. It helps with boost creep and it just makes things a little bit better if you want you can reroute it back into the downpipe with some custom fabrication or you can just have a dump tube to the atmosphere like a lot of us do um, a tile 38 millimeter mvs wastegate is what i would recommend to you guys typically when it comes to wastegate you're gonna want the 38 millimeter wastegate for high boost applications uh, and the 44 millimeter wastegate for lower boost applications i have a whole video on wastegates if you want to go check that one out i'll link it like right up here uh, at this point you are going to swap out that bypass valve from the oem one over to the cob lf bypass valve it's a really good bypass valve. A lot of people are going to say, can I go blow off valve? If you really want to, you can talk with your tuner on that one. Uh, I always advise if you want to make changes, you want to do anything like 
on your own. Uh, talk to your tuner, run it by your tuner, see what they have to say about it, because each tuner is going to feel differently about it. Um, if you are going to be going with flex fuel, at this point, I would consider either getting a radium dual fuel pump set up with two AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pumps or a larger 450 liter per hour fuel pump. Like I said before, E85 takes a lot more fuel than pump gas does. So you're going to be pushing more fuel through the fuel system. So you're going to have to have a bigger fuel pump for that. At this point, if you are considering flex fuel, go with ID1300s. We talked about injector duty cycle earlier. It's going to help with your injector duty cycle quite a bit and an ETS 3.5 inch front mount intercooler um, if you haven't already gotten the three inch. If not, the three inch should still work for you. So for the 500 wheel horsepower range, like I said, if you're a non-type RA short block owner, highly suggest a built short block at this point. A lot of the stuff that is going to transfer over from the 450 wheel horsepower range over to this 500 wheel horsepower range, that Cobb access port, Cobb SF intake with box, Cobb three port boost controller or Grim Speed, whatever one you decide to go with, the Cobb catted downpipe, the whatever cat back you're feeling. NGK 2309 spark plugs, uh, ID 1300s, whether it's flex fuel or pump gas at this point, uh, injector duty cycle will be around 85% on E85. Um, so even on pump gas, you should be totally fine. Uh, even with my old 05 STI, we made 460 wheel horsepower on pump gas with ID 1300s, no problem. You're gonna you're gonna be using that dash six fuel line again, the Aeromotive A1000, the ETS 3.5 inch front mount intercooler, the Killer B Holy header exhaust, manifold whatever one you decide to go with whether it's ETS or killer B if applicable the secondary air pumps like we talked about the iWire hybrid math speed density conversion uh, the ACT HDSS clutch should still be working for you at this point that PLM 38 millimeter external wastegate up pipe the tile 38 millimeter external wastegate the Cobb tuning LF bypass valve and then here's some of the changes that you're gonna be seeing in the 500 wheel horsepower range you're gonna be swapping to an FP black turbo it's very good turbo now the downside to running an FP black stock location turbo on a Subaru is you run into some fitment issues. If you guys remember when we did the 05 STI, we had some fitment issues with that FP Black around the TGVs. Um, yes, we got it to fit. It was a pain in the ass. Um, I wouldn't advise anybody do that. So if you are going to be running the FP Black, that uses a 3.3 inch turbo inlet. That's a big turbo inlet. You're going from a 2.4 inch on most turbos to a 3.3 inch. Now with the addition of the 3.3 inch turbo inlet, I do advise you swap to an AMS intake manifold. It gives you a lot more clearance around the turbo, gives you a lot more height for that turbo and let to fit down in there a lot better. Um, so highly, highly suggest that AMS intake manifold. No, you don't have to do it, but I do advise it. If you're not gonna be doing it, I advise you get some eight millimeter phenolic spacers from IAG Torque Solutions, whoever it may be, just to help with clearancing a little bit more. You are at this point going to want that radium dual fuel pump set up with, uh, with the two AM 340 liter per hour fuel pumps. Uh, and a iWire hardwire kit for that fuel pump just so that way you are running it at 100% all the time so that way you have all the fuel flow that you need. Um, if you are running the radium dual fuel pump setup, I do advise you put an inline dash six uh, fuel filter in your feed so that way you are capturing any debris that may be going in the gas tank and getting pushed up to the front of the car. Um, and then the extra bonus part that I have for the 500 wheel horsepower range is going to be a fluid damper crank pulley. Now, like I said, I will list all of these modifications down below in the description for you guys. So that way, if you guys want to like copy, cut, copy, paste any of these, you can. Um, and like I said earlier, each tuner is going to tune the car differently. They're all going to react differently, but these should get you in the realm of the power that you're shooting for. Um, if you blow up your engine, it is not my fault. Just throwing that out there right now. But I hope that answers your guys' questions of what modifications do you need to get to what power intervals for your STI. Like I said, um, EJ based WRXs will follow this pretty closely. The biggest difference will be your short block, your clutch and your transmission. Your transmission is going to need a little bit more attention if you do plan on pushing it hard. A PPG gear set is always recommended if you're trying to push power in your five speed. That was a loud car. As well as some more blast plates. They go a long ways, but I'm not gonna get into drivetrain modifications today. But if you guys feel like I missed anything, if I'm wildly off or if I'm inaccurate on anything, please feel free to let me know down below in the comments, help some other people out. Uh, but with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. Color of the day today will be gray for the STI since I'm waiting on a wire harness to come in for this car. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, I'm not going to tell you to do it. If you wanna do it, you're gonna do it. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.